As Father Paul reminded us last night, the story of God and God's people is a love story. And we know from St. John's Gospel that that love story actually begins prior to the creation of the world. But the love story we heard tonight starts with creation and God giving of God's self out of love, creating the world and all within it, and you and I, God's people. But like many love stories, uh, this love story of God has a betrayal in it. And that betrayal is what we call sin, even original sin, however you wish to understand that, whether it's uh, Adam and Eve uh, eating a piece of fruit or the sin of Cain against Abel, or as Father Paul was describing last night, uh, the sins of all of humanity down through the ages, uh, sins against God and sins against one another, which ultimately are also sins against God. And so the rest of God's love story is the story of God overcoming that betrayal, putting that relationship back together through the rest of salvation history. Uh, the co- what we heard tonight, the covenant with Abraham, the covenant with Moses, the promises to the prophets and to David and so forth, down to the new covenant in Jesus Christ. That is God's love story. God's salvation story, which we heard tonight. And at this Easter vigil, we hear that love story in, I think, a powerful and very unique way. We see it with our eyes, we hear it, we pray it, we smell it even, uh, we feel it, we sing it, we pass, uh, we pass it, we experience it in a different way than any other liturgy throughout the year. And the church recognizes this. At the beginning of tonight's Easter Vigil, Father Paul introduced it. If we keep this memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to God's word and celebrating God's mysteries, then we will surely have hope of sharing Jesus' triumph over death and living with him in God. So really, how joyful and how blessed we are to be in this beautiful place with beautiful people celebrating this. Our Easter gospel is also an occasion of great joy. We hear this powerful story that after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. In my imagination, I think in all of our imaginations, we can picture them as they went on their way. They probably went like people walking to a cemetery. Uh, Many of us have had that experience of going to a funeral home, going to a cemetery with the freshness of the death of a loved one uh, weighing on our hearts and on our souls. Maybe a parent or a spouse or a child. We go like those who find it hard to believe that this is how it all ends. So we can picture their their faces, we can imagine their sadness and their question. Can the one they truly loved, can Jesus, who has meant so much to them, truly have died? Throughout the Passion story, the women are the model disciples. They were present at the crucifixion. We heard it last night. They saw that horror. They experienced that with Jesus. And now, once again, they are faithful. They are present the following day. While the, while the men have run away in fear, they go to the tomb, even in the midst of their, of their grief and sadness, to honor the body of the Lord. But suddenly they feel this tremor, they experience this earthquake, and the angel says to them, do not be afraid and orders them to go and tell the disciples he has been raised and indeed goes ahead of you to Galilee. The women leave, and as they are on their way to do the angel's bidding, Jesus himself meets them and again says, Do not fear. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. In case you didn't notice, the message of the angel and the message of Jesus is the same. Do not fear and go to Galilee. 
What does it mean to go to Galilee? It is more than a place. It is the place. Galilee is the place where they were first called, where these women and the men, the disciples, were first called, where everything began. So to return there, to return to the place where they were originally called, that is what Jesus is asking them to do. So tonight, each one of us can ask, what sadness or fear do I bring in my life tonight? It may be the sadness of a loved one who has died, maybe recently, maybe years ago. It may be the sadness of our homeland uh, being under authoritarian rule or some, some terrible thing like that. It may be the sadness of poverty or the sadness of our city uh, torn apart by violence and racism. Whatever our sadness is, whatever our fear is, we hear that Easter message of Jesus. Do not be afraid. Go to Galilee. Where is my Galilee? Where is your Galilee? I think we need to remind ourselves to go back and remember where is that place of our first encounter with Jesus. Do we remember it? Perhaps it was your baptism. If you were like me and baptized as an infant, uh, perhaps it was your first communion or your confirmation or some other time that you truly felt that you were encountering the person of Jesus. Have I forgotten it? Have any of us forgotten it? Well, today the Lord asks us to seek it and promises that if we seek it, we will find it. And there the risen Lord will be waiting for us. Have I gone off the roads and paths which made me forget it? Then we can say at this Easter time, Lord, help me. Tell me where my Galilee is, for you know that I want to return there to encounter you and let me be embraced there by your love and by your mercy. So tonight we are full of Easter joy and we are called to carry that joy to the world. In just a moment, we will bring the Easter candle again to the front of the church, and the first person will meet the light of the risen one and immediately pass that light to the next person. And these actions are not just things that we do. They are full of meaning. We are asked to do this with a glad and joyful heart and to pass the light of Christ tonight. And then as we go from this place tonight, uh, we will know with great certainty that what pours forth from here, from each of us individually and from this church, will illuminate the entire world with the joy of Easter. <laughs>